Hey out there, this is Kamethia, also known as Mookie Around the City. I have here Knockout Health and Wellness, your new boxing and fitness virtual assistant and app. You can video chat with trainers, queue up previous sessions, request libraries of various workouts, fully customizable workouts to fit your boxing needs in home. Form, technique, character building, strength, endurance, meal prepping. Hey, knock that out. Knockout Health and Wellness. Download on your smartphone today. <laughs> you talk about him moving, I'm back here like... I see it jumping now. Why is it not jumping now? It's probably doing it and it's just not registered. There we go. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Alright, let's go. And we are live now, basically. Welcome to the Who That Podcast, the loudest podcast this side of the Mississippi and the Nile River. We are fresh from outer space in your face. Welcome to the mothership. How y'all doing? I'm B. It's me again. I'm glad y'all made it another week. No corona. No vaccine. God, I'm good. All right. <laughs> and like always, we have the Captain Paco. What's up? What's up, y'all? 
We are live and direct tonight with our um, Survivor Stories, episode two. Woo-hoo. 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 We two in. Two in. If y'all don't uh, know, we've been doing uh, the Survivor Stories. Uh, the first one was with Miss uh, Danny Jaden. Danny Jaden, yes. Yes. So make to sure catch y'all a predator herself. Yes. 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 So make sure y'all check that episode out if you have not already. But... On episode two, Paco, who do we have that is uh, come to join us on the mothership tonight? Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Amanda Aven. I am 35 years old, <laughs> and I'm from Lewisburg, Tennessee. Ooh. ooh. Hey. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Super Bowl. Let's talk about that real quick before we get into this. I mean, what happened was yeah. exactly what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was... And everybody uh, in the U.S. <laughs> that was a terrible Super Bowl. Terrible. Terrible. Terrible Super Bowl. Yeah. But phenomenal fucking defense. From, uh, shout out to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Woo-woo. Because uh, anybody that knows, uh, Kansas City has been... Like, they're, they're a second-half team, and they usually bounce back. Yep. And the defense for the Bucks didn't allow... Nothing, no rubber band, no trampoline. He didn't mm-hmm. even bounce it off. No, no. The only thing he did was bounce off the field from all these sacks they kept giving him. Like, yeah. So that was great. Uh, Brady, he was just a. Yeah. It was just a clinic, man. Yeah. It was just a clinic. I, uh, I give more credit to the defense than, than Brady. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Because if the defense wasn't there, Mahomes would have showed out and would have been more tit for tat. Yep. But like Brady, he'd go out there, throw them little short passes all the way down the field. Yep. And the defense would just stuff Mahomes at every turn. Yes, yes. So then Brady's out there, you're like, well, all right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 this, this is what he had the whole night. All night. So uh, shout out to anybody that bet it. That you're oh, I know some people make a killer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they. I think ten dollar bets was turning around for one hundred and seventy five dollar payouts and shit. Whoa! Yes, yes, bro. Yes. Oh. Yes. I remember doing it for quarters growing up. <laughs> <laughs> doing the little quarter squares. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, um, what else we got? Anything else to go on before we jump into it? Mm, is anything else happening? Uh, Super Bowl. I'm sure there's some shit, but that's not what we're really here for today. Right. Let's go ahead and just... Shout out to Joe Biden being quiet. <laughs> Doesn't it feel weird without a bunch of, like, political chaos? Yo. Yeah. It's it, nice, though. It's scary. No. It's scary. Quietness is scary. It's scary. I mean, but you, you so, cross that bridge when you get to it. Sometimes you need time right. to yourself. Look, and as the commentators for all of last year, I'm, yes. just, I'm, I'm very happy that we were able to make it through January and just, just get in. I feel that. So okay, um, so we called this episode "Mistake." Happy of Black History Month. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That part. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah, boy. Hey, boy. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So we called this episode "Mistaken Identity." Um. The reason I titled it my mistaken identity is not only just to catch your attention, but it's just the idea you think you know somebody and you don't. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's a that's a scary thought, man. Yeah. That's a scary thought. Yeah. Committing yourself, going along, and then, you know, boom, everything yeah. changes. Yeah. So. You, you think you know somebody, but it's not always the case. Yeah. Um, um, you know, I just I'm here to tell my story about how I had that mistaken identity. Um, I met this guy that just swooped me off my feet. He was perfect in every way, shape, or form, which should have been a red flag, honestly. (laughs) Most guys that are just, like, laying it on heavy, you should just, you know, automatically know in your head, like, you know, is is he just, like, being really super overbearing, or is he, like, really being genuine? Right. You know, and I was... I was to the point where I'd been single for a while. I allowed my wait, wait, heart. Wait, how long is a while? 
I was the single for a year. So okay, all right. Yeah. I was single for a good while. And, you know, long enough where I felt like I had found myself. I was happy being alone. I was doing things I loved to do. Had my motorcycle, was riding a lot, you know, this, mm -hmm. that. What kind of bike did you have? Uh, oh, okay. I remember that. Yeah, the white one. Betty yes. White. Yes. Betty White, yes. baby. Betty White. Betty White, yeah. 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 I miss her. To, to the great name for the bike right there. Protect her, y'all. Don't yeah. let her. Nothing happened to Betty White ever. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, please, Lord, just protect her. That's okay. all I ask. <laughs> Love you, Rose. Love. Yeah. <laughs> Love. The best. But, like, I think that a lot of people, they think they know who they're with, you know, at first. But I think you should just, like, my advice, personally, is wait it out. Because a lot of women, or and men, they jump from relationship to relationship. And, you know, they... they Serial monogamy. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And they allow people to move in with them before they're ready. And, yeah. you know, this, that, and the other. And sometimes that may work out. You know, I know a lot of couples that jumped in together 100%. And then they ended up, you know, being together 15, right. 20 years. Right. And and they may have gotten lucky. That may have worked for them. But I, in my experience, I don't think moving in together within the first year is even wise, honestly. Right, right. It, personally. Yeah. But me and this man, we ended up, you know, hitting it off. And he basically just kind of really moved in and preyed on me. It was a, uh, it it was something that i didn't even realize was happening because it felt you know just too good right you know he was just showering it on and you know i, I was showered with gifts and he would always cook and clean that you know while right. i was at work and just he laid it on so thick and it was just so perfect some was, shit you wasn't used to it was exactly it was different from dating uh you know john john right Ruby. You know what I mean? and, and you know I don't have the best track record either. <laughs> so, yes. you know, I mean, I've been through my fair share of frogs, but I, I thought this time, you know, he was I genuine. He, he was older than me. I thought he was more mature than this. But, right. um, you know, all of my friends that knew him failed to tell me how he really was. Oh, they, they knew? Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. And that, that's probably one of those situations where like, man, let's get this nigga off of our couch. <laughs> Is, right. No, uh, and he I mean, was. He was the on. he was the couch hopper and I didn't even know this. Yeah. Oh, and God. yeah, so I, I basically took this guy in thinking he's the one, you know, and I'm head over heels in love with him, yeah. you know, and my kids liked him, you know, I really liked him, my family really liked him. He was a really good actor. Yeah. He really was. He was a very good actor and he I feel like he believed his own bullshit for mm -hmm. a while. But as soon as we got married, which was totally dumb and naive How of long me, was it? six months. Oh, you made it got six months. Yes. <laughs> Look at him. He's like, Look. Yeah. <laughs> he is like serious right now. I'm like, what? Yeah. Six months? Six yeah. Months. yeah. It, so, so don't, don't do that. Six months. Don't do that. You so. try to get married in the first year, just. Pumped and brakes. Yeah. Just pumped and brakes, y'all. Pumped and brakes, yeah. So we ended up, um, I, I was making good money, you know, head over heels. And he uh, he basically was like, let's get married. I was like, okay. He was already calling me his wife. Like I'm yeah. saying, it was just very overbearing. Like I didn't know how to take all this attention and it came at me so fast. I was just like, well, yeah, why shouldn't we get married? We're going to be together forever, you know? Um. It was literally like the week after we got married that things just. Oh yeah, he so that, that contract was signed. Yeah, it, it changed. I mean, literally everything changed. It was like it that was piece like, of paper was possession. Yeah. yeah, like I own you now, and, and he was. People with people, you have to like, you have to give them almost a little long haul because a year is not really that long to keep a con up. No, no, it's really not. And I think after a year, you really start to uh, know someone's character, honestly. Yeah. I think it takes at least a year. Yeah, I mean, at least the beginning. To the start. Be right, 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 right. And um, he, he was a great guy all the way up until we got married. And then, you know, it just started with verbal abuse here and there, you know, little side jabs, mm -hmm. you know. Little quick bitches. Right, mm -hmm. right. It just, you know, just, yeah. I mean, it was, it was becoming more and more toxic as right, time right. went on, you know. And we, 
he was just he was a big spender. He had a champagne taste on a beer budget. Uh, he was a moochie type. Uh, so all this love that I'm getting, I'm the type, my love language is let me give you something. Right. Let me be generous to you. Let me, you know, right. that's my love language. So for me, it was like, here, let me shower you with these gifts right. and, and let me do these things for you. But really, I didn't see it as manipulation. Right. And it totally was. Like, he was smoking up all the weed. He was yeah. spending all the money. We were racking up debt left and right. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean. And the happiness shades the reality yeah. sometimes. You right. get to shade where you're like, oh, I'm so happy right now. Right. And then when that happiness is done, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm $30,000 in debt. Exactly. Like, yeah. And that's that's exactly what happened to me. And just the debt alone, I was the only one working. I begged him to get a job. And, he, you know, he, he just. What he kind would, of excuses did you use? Well, he would get a job, like a little uh, carpet job or something for like a couple weeks. And he'd go on the road and then he'd come back. So it was very temporary. Like he knew what he was doing. He had a little private thing with the carpet, but he never worked. Right. So, um, you know, he worked here and there. It's very sporadic. You can tell he just had a horrible job history. Right. But these are all things I wouldn't find out until later how bad and to what extent. Because you got was. married too fast. Because I got married too fast. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Don't get married too fast. Yeah, take your time, people. Absolutely. Somebody, it only takes somebody just a, a couple days to ruin your life if they can. Absolutely, absolutely. So go ahead. Keep so going. all this debt is just racking up, you know, and we're we're moving towards Christmas. We have six kids together. You know, he's got yeah. three, I have three. We've meshed these families, everything's right. grand, you know, we're trying. Right. We're keeping up the facade at least. So, you know, after Christmas there's a lot of stress. I'm working seventy hours a week, you know, I'm wow. just busting my tail for my family. And I see it all just, you know, going and, and my whole life was just going downhill at this point. And there was this one morning that um, he he worked on Fridays with my mom and they would have half days together on Fridays. So he would ride to work with her a lot on Fridays. Mm -hmm. Well, this particular Friday, which was January 25th of 2019, you can something like that. Um, <clears throat> he basically said that he wasn't going to ride with mom. He didn't want to ride around with her after work so she could run her errands, whatever, whatever. So right. I was like, okay, hop in the car. I'll take you with me. You can take the car back, go to work, have a great day, whatever, whatever. Because I was working a lot. You right. know, he, if he can use the car, sure, go ahead. So we get, you know, to the store and I, I, it was cold outside. It was January 25th, you know. Right. And I go to grab my gloves and I asked him, I was like, can you see my gloves in the back seat? And he, he looks at me and he's like, I don't see him. I don't see him. And I was just like, okay, don't, don't worry about it. Just grab my wallet. Let's go. So we go to go inside, you know, and we get our drinks and stuff, get up there, we order biscuits, you know, right, Southern right. gas station. Right. We get our biscuits for the morning. Right. Go inside and he takes my Kavri bag and he slings it over his shoulder while all my designer perfume was in the pocket that he had unzipped. Mm -hmm. So we proceed to pick up all the glass and what oh, and I broke. Right. So yeah, no, and you know, like designer perfume is really, really cheap. No, so yeah, so you, needless to say, I wasn't happy about it. So we get in the car and we're bickering back and forth. But it was more than bickering. It was just complete attack you right, know right. it wasn't normal like yeah it was basically yeah. like that yeah. you know so all the way to my work because i'm still he's in the car i was going to give him the car all the way he's just in my ear in my ear i'm just silent i'm like oh my god just quit 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 you know like i'm about to take you back to mom like i'm done with you i'll be late to work like i don't even care anymore so, um, I finally, I, I got tired of his mouth. I turned around and came back and lo and behold, he says, I'm not going to work with your mom. Fuck this. I'm out. Opens the car door and jumps out and hits his head on the side of the pavement. And I didn't know what happened. It was still dark outside. Oh, was the car moving? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. We were doing about 40, 45 miles. He jumped out of a moving car? Out of a moving vehicle. Wow. So, oh, go ahead. <laughs> it's gonna be all right, buddy. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, hold on. <laughs> so, okay. 
So yeah, it, 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 yeah, yeah. Red flag. Yes, right. these are these are huge red flags. <laughs> Women, he pay attention. He steps out of a moving car. Oh, he didn't step. He he straight jumped. Oh out wow, of the action car. hero. <laughs> he didn't he didn't do so well because when he smacked the pavement he actually sustained a traumatic brain injury oh, wow. and he was in ICU for a month and I just prayed and nursed him back to health and wiped his ass and did everything oh, wow. a good wife should and, you know by this time I have my great have you ever had your ass wiped yeah I wiped his ass no I've never had a woman wipe my ass yeah oh, I was wow. down like I was super down like, weren't there nurses for that? Yeah, but he was, like, super needy and dependent on me. Like, the whole time oh, he was in there. that nurse button. Right. <laughs> well, I could. He, you know, <laughs> right. But he just, he was so needy and dependent. Even the nurses, they couldn't handle him. Like, he tried to escape the hospital several oh, times. Several yeah, times. Yeah, when I would leave, he would do this. He was so attached to me. That man like, was a <laughs> Well, I found, <laughs> I found out later he had extensive drug use problems. Uh, and well, that's I where a lot it. of my money was oh, going. Wow. So it, I knew it. And now, <laughs> whether it was meth or not, I know there were pills involved. For sure, a lot. So he was stealing uh, pills from people that I know. Yeah, and, like, and, yeah. Like J11 or yeah. Yeah. Like that yeah. name was on something. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so he gets these brain injury. He's in the hospital. How are you gonna escape a hospital with a fucking brain injury? Well, they don't really know quite what they're doing. They just work on impulse. Like once they start to heal, they still have a lot of trauma, obviously, right. and. Stuff so, like that, but it depends on where you have the injury at, too. He had a right temporal lobe damage, so he just had, like, his ear was cracked. He couldn't hear properly. He couldn't oh. smell. There was things he couldn't taste. Like, sound like COVID. <laughs> it sounds like COVID. <laughs> right. Yes. We, but, we've cracked the case. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was really rough being in ICU. You know, they don't have beds up there. They don't have chairs. It's constant chaos. I mean, it's just, you wouldn't believe them nurses just completely save lives up there. It's amazing. Right. Like, I got to give it out to Vandy nurses. They are, they're yeah, doing their I thing. Do. They're doing their thing. Yeah. Give it up to Vandy nurses. Okay. They are. So what happens next? Okay, so after um, almost a month, the last week, they decide to put him into a mental health facility Good to call. get evened out on meds because he obviously didn't jump out of a vehicle because he was sane. Right. Um, so he went to, but, you know, after a brain injury like that, you don't know it, but you may have amnesia surrounding the incident. Mm. He did. So he's in this mental health facility not knowing what wow. happened, why he's in there. You know, like he, he has no clue. So he goes through this week of whatever hell without me, you know, and he's horrible. And then he comes home. I had care after care set up with his mom and stuff like that for when he came out because he would need care. And there was a lot of medications and things he needed help with. Okay. And um, at first he was like really bad with dates and stuff like that. Like he, photosensitivity, he wasn't able to have light in his face okay. whatsoever. So it sense. really hindered my life as well. Like you don't realize how hard it is being a caretaker until you have to be one yourself. It's, it's very humbling, honestly. Mm -hmm. It is. It's so, let's talk about the extent of this amnesia. Mm -hmm. Was this, did he, re he remembered himself? Yes. And you guys. Kind of. It, it was like his, the worst personality that he could possibly have was like intensified at this point okay. after the brain injury. Okay. So, remember his kids? Yeah. He remembered everybody. Like when he first woke up, he even looked at me and he was like, my wife. Like that, and that was what I was saying about possession. It was always my this or right, my right, that. Right. Everything was so possessive with him. Right. And and he did. He put up a very good facade. I, I totally fell hook, line, and sinker right. for it. You know. But I I had you know tremendous guilt from that because we were arguing during you know the incident when he jumped out of the car and bailed. I wouldn't be but, guilty at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean Should that's just right. you know. Right. Right. <laughs> right. You broke my designer perfume. <laughs> <laughs> you made me turn around. 
you didn't want to go to work with my mom, and you stepped your ass out of a car at 45 miles per hour. All right. I love hearing everybody else's opinion <laughs> yeah. on this. It's, just, it's great. Yeah. But no, I mean, he, and his sister and his mother and his ex-wife <laughs> told me as well in the hospital after all of this happened, I'm meeting his fa other family now, right. you know. And this this is literally all the family he had here. So they're coming to the hospital and they're, you know, just totally overwhelmed and stuff. And here I am, a new wife. I don't, I don't even know these people. And they're sitting there like, let me go see him, you know, this and that. Right. It was just so overwhelming, the whole experience. It, it was super overwhelming. But once we got out and we had the caretaking in place with his mom and stuff like that, she came over for three days and that night she was going to town to get us some stuff you right. know because obviously we weren't in the best financial shape at this point right, you know right. um but she went to this store for us and she came back with his youngest son and on the way back she ended up wrecking a car and she passed away and his son Shut up. was in the back brace for quite some time so now you're caretaking and two people no, no, no. Okay. They they lived with uh, the ex. So, okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So she did all the caretaking. Okay. But his mom passed away, and it was, it was very sad. I was going to the memorial, and they were asking him to say a word about her, and he's just like, I, don't, I can't recall anything. Like, right. That was all he said. He was just like, I can't recall anything. And he remembered his mom, you know, and he, he had selective memories. And, you know, so it, it was... It was neat watching the progression, you know, from, you know, holding my dead, dying husband in my hands, waiting for an ambulance to him functioning and walking. So that's what I, I tried to stay focused on was, you know, just keeping it going right, for right. him and the kids and, you know, so I'm doing the right thing. When he, when he lost his mama. So this March. So only two months later. It was March 3rd, I believe. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was literally three oh, days after oh. he was released from the loony bin that his mom passed away. And oh, wow. it, yeah, so it was just, it was so much at one time. Yes. You know? And after that, after he lost his mom, it was just complete pandemonium. I mean, just you talk about making a bad situation worse. That was yeah. it. That was the, the, the top of the iceberg. And it seemed like after that, he just. He got worse verbally. Um, he started pushing me around. He would go through my phone at night. It was the strangest thing because he was on these anti-epileptic drugs and stuff like that that would just make him pass out all day. I mean, he was asleep while I was at right, work. Right. But when I came home from work, you know, I'd watch TV for a little bit and then go to sleep because I had to be up at like 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And he's outside with my phone roaming around the yard and stuff. It like three four o'clock in the morning i'm like what are you doing man wow. like it, it was just crazy stuff like he took my helmet from my motorcycle one time and like ripped the headset off. it was just crazy stuff all the time i mean i don't think any sane human could have taken that any better than what i did right, right. <laughs> he just was just doing that type of shit yeah all the time i mean just crazy stuff like you know those little um yellow little tykes chairs from when we were kids yeah i guess them in the backyard yeah he he would take those and he would set them off to the side like in a corner with a pillow and he would lay on the wall and just mope if he didn't get his way about something what? yeah like it was crazy like i felt like i was now do you feel like this was from the brain injury or? okay so this is where it gets funny okay all right let's get it all right so hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. <laughs> Pump the brakes. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Is everybody paying attention? Yeah. Okay. So after his brain injury, he starts feeling a little better. Obviously, he's cognitively okay, and he says, "I'm. I want to. I want a job." And he's like, "All right, I want you to get a job. I need oh, some yeah. fucking help. Right, right. <laughs> For real. So let's go get this job." So. Well, you know, I'm helping him apply and stuff. He's obviously not the brightest crayon in the box right now. So, you know, I'm helping him apply and stuff. And apparently there was a background check at Dollar General where he had applied for a job. Mm -hmm. And we got a paper back in the mail saying that he had filled his background check. And mm -hmm. they didn't say what for. It said, if you need a copy of it, you can send off mm -hmm. for it, right? Yeah. So I'm interested. I'm like, why did he fail his background yeah. check? I don't know about 
place. You're right. Know? Like, why? Dollar General, why? Right. What, like, did, what you did you do? do? What did yes. you do that you can't get minimum wage? Right, right. right. Like, what did you do? Okay, so I send off for it, you know, like six weeks later or something, he comes back. Come to find out, he's got like domestic stuff, he asked, he's already on probation. They called his phone. I pick it up and answer it. And they say, um, Mr. So-and-so, you can come in and um, pay your probation for this month or you're going to go to jail for six months. And I'm sitting here like, I have a brain patient. Like, wow. I can't be I can't be responsible for this. So I go ahead and pay the $600 to send him off. See, so. wait a minute. Stop right there. <laughs> that was your way out. <laughs> yeah, you would think. You, you, that you was, would think. you missed, that. We, we call that a blessing. <laughs> yes. Where we... <laughs> Come from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if that sure. had been me, and Brandon sure. had testified, if that had been me, I'd have been like, they're going to jail, buddy. They're going to jail. Oh, jail. Like, we're having a yard set. Jail. Jail. Going to jail. He was so fresh out, though. I don't yeah. feel like he would have done okay. And plus, I don't think they would have really even took him at that point they because he would have been a liability right, to them. Right, right, you know, right, right. it's true. just too much meds, too much upkeep, right. whatever. You know, it's just. Right. We would have waited to find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. You would have been sitting there like, I wonder what's going on. I got, two, I got 20 says he don't make it. Yeah. <laughs> he got two months and they raped him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you won't remember. No. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right. So where were we, Parker? Um, he, uh, we just got the background, background check. check. Okay, he's so. He's got ass and probation. Okay. Probation. So, so, find out he's got probation, Still right? And, um, I, I, I get the report back, find out he has domestics, and he's on probation, and he was interfering with a 911 call. So, I imagine that was part of the domestic, yeah. if I had to guess. You right, know, they were right, fighting, right. and I fuck you, that's my problem. Right. If I had a guess. Yeah. Um, but apparently it was against his ex, whatever. Right. And she it was just wild to me. So I went up, of course, paid the six hundred dollars, got him out, you know, of trouble. He was off probation, whatever, right. whatever. We're gonna move on from this. You know. So So that payment got him off probation? It did. It wow. did. That was all that was left and he was right at the end of the month. He didn't tell me the whole time he was with me that he was even on probation. He never oh. went to a probation office. Wow. He yeah. would he told me later on, he said, Don't worry, I fucked the probation officer. She loves me. Like yeah. I'm I'm serious. Y'all wow. can't make this worry. up. Yeah. Stay cool. Yeah. My <laughs> new way to my yeah. dick has this. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Me okay. and my dick have this under yeah. control. Yeah, no. I mean, the oh, more wow. I found out about him, the more he just disgusted me. I didn't want anything to do with him. I mean, mm -hmm. it was horrible. I mean, it just absolutely horrible. But after his mom passed, you know, the time it went by for a couple weeks at least, you know, he was trying to get a job. I thought things were getting a little better, you yeah. know. And I go out to get his prescriptions one day. This was in March, I believe, as well, the end of March. Mm -hmm. And I went out to get his prescriptions, hopped on the motorcycle, you know, because it's quicker and yeah. less and gas. Slow. And, and like yeah, I love, yeah, I love my bike. So yeah, yeah. I, I head out, you know, I'm kicking ass. This lady comes out and she's checking her mail on one side while I'm going the other way, you know. And this other car is coming the other uh, way at the same time. So where am I going to go? I ended up just dropping my bike and throwing my bike in my hands. Right, you know, right, just, right. So when I did, the handlebar came down and it smashed me on my hand. So I mm -hmm. broke my hand and I worked in microelectronics at the time. So I couldn't use my hands right. okay. to do my job. And, I, you know, you need surgeon hands for that kind of stuff. It's really intricate. Okay. So I wasn't able to work at that time again. So I was out of work on short-term disability for quite some time. Oh, wow. And um, I think at least six or eight weeks, I think to let my bones heal but yeah i was out of, i was out of work and my bike was wrecked i mean it just seemed like you know when it rained it poured it was just yeah. a little bit of everything i mean we had a forty seven thousand dollar helicopter bill from life like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know the the medical bills we're talking like three hundred thousand plus and they're still rolling in and you oh, know yeah. we're not divorced yet yeah. fyi i'm still surviving this yeah I am. I'm still surviving this, and I feel like it's going to take years, right. honestly, to recover from this. I, I've done an excellent job thus far. I must brag on myself at least a little bit. I've come up a lot more. So, 
and, and gained a lot of wisdom on how to be a better what judge of character. Yeah, so I was going to say, what have you learned? <laughs> Wait, there's more to the story. Let's get to the learning. <laughs> like, okay, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm this. I'm like, he's been bested. Uh, <laughs> All right, so what do you want to know? All right, so uh, your disability. Yeah. So what I want to know, what was, was that, uh, you said it was about seven, eight weeks? Right. So you got seven, eight weeks just right. at the house now. Yes, with, with, with this guy. Oh, it was torment. Like, oh, that was horrible, guys. Like, I cannot explain to you. It was just like, it became, like I said, from a verbal abuse, you know, you fucking bitch, you know, this and that. Just very aggressive right. tone. I want this. Like, just very aggressive all the time to physical pushing or, mm. you know, just throwing something at me or, right. or whatever, you know, the case, however he felt. It was almost like a little autistic kid that throws mm. tantrums, you know what right. I'm saying? Right. It, it seemed like he didn't he have control. Thing, it was just like, all right, you gave him a more rope, like more leeway. Was like, right. So what was some of the stuff he did? I mean, it's just crazy stuff. No, like, I mean, like, <laughs> like you know, I know you said he took a little kid chair sitting in the yeah, corner and yeah. stuff. Like, I want to hear about some of, some of these actions. Yeah, yeah. He would just, he was weird. He would just take, like, my dog and just walk around with her at night. It was late at night. We had to put cameras up just to see what he was doing. Oh, wow. It was that scary. Like, he would just, you know, try to get in my car and leave or, or hide my keys before I'd get up for work in the morning. And it wasn't like he was sleepwalking or anything like that. It was just that he was just he so out of it. Yeah. Right, right. He was awake at night, but he would get super paranoid, I guess, about whatever I was doing because he never really had time with me. Right. Now that I'm home, he has plenty of time with me to fight, argue. Mm -hmm. I really start to see his character and how manipulative he was and how much he was sucking my bank account dry. And, so you how know, did you discover this, these things out? What all, let's talk about some of these discoveries. Mm -hmm. Okay, like how did you discover he was, he was on drugs? How did you discover... Like, where did you, you know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. So, um, someone that I lived, someone I lived with at the time, mm -hmm. obviously got prescribed pain pills right. and they were narcotics, you right. know? So, um, he, apparently that was his drug of choice and he was stealing them and, you know, this person comes to me and says, Hey, I'm missing 25 pills out of my bottle. Like right. what's going on, you know? And he would act on them. But course, you yeah. know, I I, I wasn't remember. taking it. Yeah, yeah, but he didn't. But you know, I I was I was just I didn't know. Honestly, I was so naive and love is blind. You know, I didn't. Yeah. I had the blinders on. I didn't see. And I even you know, even though I believe that you know I was doing the right thing. At the end of the day, I was just enabling him. Right, right. To act like that. And later on, I found out as he's moved on somewhere else, he's mm -hmm. working, talks to people normally, like, it is, uh, yeah. and, and told people that I made him sound more stupid than what he was. So it makes me wonder, was he pretending the whole time? No, he was not. He stepped out of a 45 mile per hour movie. <laughs> do, you really, do you really think he got that well the minute we split up? Because no, no. it was literally so weak. Well, I think no, that, I no, think he'll still, never be well. Yeah, no, I no. think he just went. He probably reverted back to the charade time. Right, right, you know right, right. The fun. Right. This is my yeah. facade. The, yeah. the facade. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. put on the costume again. Right, right. That right. man right. stepped out of a movie vehicle. Well, I think he's used up. I think he's yeah. used up a lot of his resources. Thankfully, um, like he I has said, no choice but to. Right. Well, to his do. mom's gone. His sister moved. You know, he basically used up everybody and couch hopped everywhere, and they didn't want anything to do with him anymore. So, right. I mean, he's probably roaming the streets somewhere. Can't find him to divorce him. So. So, how did you leave him? Um. Well, it was really. <laughs> this is how it happened. We stayed up playing cards with our friends all night, and this one particular night, they ended up wait, wait, leaving. Wait, wait, Cards Against Humanity. Okay. Right. Hey, right. love that game. Me too. We had the big black box too. We got the big suckers for yeah, online. Yeah, we like it. But 
we uh, we were done playing cards that night. My friends left, you know, around midnight or whatever, and he tries to get all you know romantic with me and stuff. And I'm obviously repulsed by him at this yeah. point. And I'm just like, man, I want to watch Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch Spartacus. <laughs> yeah, I want to watch these hot bodies and not you have to try worry it again in an hour. <laughs> yeah, like hey, seriously, I, I need to watch the show. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> but I told him I was just like, leave me alone, and he was just very forceful. Like I've never seen him physically or sexually be forceful like this it was it was very scary it scared me to my core where i knew i didn't have control over the situation right. at all like I, there was no boundary like you thought you had control and just right. just like you know what I mean? it was all over with. right yeah. right so you know I, I feel like you know I, at that point that was the straw that was just it for yeah. me i, I couldn't so how, how far did that situation go like? okay so he's i mean he's literally take trying to take off my pants i mean he was just like jerking at me and i'm trying to keep him up you know and right, i'm just right, like right. stop stop so he's mocking me saying oh you don't like that no no like no, yeah no. so it was very demeaning that's it's the just, quickest way to piss women off oh man no oh. i literally guys i put my feet in his chest and i kicked him as hard as i could into the wall and i'll tell you what that was the most liberating thing i've ever done in my life yeah mm -hmm. i told him i said pack your shit you're gone tomorrow you're gone and did he willingly go he had no choice oh well, that's good because Sometimes you ask people to leave and they will not leave right, at all. Right, ever. right, 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 right. <laughs> right, right. So, dumb. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but he. I found out a lot of interesting things from his ex, too, after the accident. She actually looked at me and she says, you're dumb if you ever think this is going to end well, you marrying him. Oh, and she was with him. Foreshadowing. Yeah. So, so she totally. And and now I, I've tried to get in touch with him. You know, for legal matters. Obviously, I'm still attached to him, and I can't get a hold of him. So I hit his baby mama up, thinking maybe she'd help me. I even offered her a little money, like help me out. You know, like yeah. if you can find him, you know, to serve him papers or whatever. And she was like, I wouldn't help you. You know, blah blah blah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, and I'm just like, how are you still defending him? Do you have Munchausen syndrome? Like, oh, nice. you know, that's so not all in all, how long were y'all married? We were married for about a year. Oh. We had, so this all went down pretty rapidly. Oh guess. yeah. Oh, oh that yeah. Was, a year and a half. The whole that's, relationship was a miserable beginning. relationship. It was the worst year and a half of my life. Well, right. year of my life. I'll say that. Six yeah. months were okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So just this, uh, so we want to recover. So six months of hard, I like this guy. This this could work. Yeah, we're gonna be together. Bring me flowers, just the sweetest kind of thing. Get married. Mm -hmm. So, how how quickly after marriage did he crack his head? Like three months. three months. Three months. Three months. We were married on October the twenty uh, second. And it's by January 25th, he had jumped out. So three months he had insurance through my company. Uh, so, and it, and it was crazy because we had originally got him on my insurance because we thought he had like an ulcer or something wrong with his stomach. He would wake up, just be violently ill. Mm. Well, I started giving him probiotics and stuff like that because yeah. I'm a little herbal nut, you yeah. know. And suddenly he was better, and I was like, "Well, look at insurance on him at least now, you right, know, right. whatever." And then wasn't expecting that three months later, you right. know, like that'd have been a totally different oh, experience without insurance. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure, you know. And I, I honestly, if it wasn't for me, he would have been dead. I mean, I, I was the one that sat on the nine one one call with my bleeding husband's head in my uh, lap. Was he unconscious? He well, part of the way when. Um, when he first, see, you gotta think too. Here's the setting of the okay. incident. It, it's early in the morning, obviously, so it's still dark outside. Right. I could, I couldn't quite see what was going on once he jumped out of the car. So I had pulled ahead and then gotten out of the car, you know, to see what was going on. So I turned the flashlight on my phone and I'm looking around, you know, like, and he's laying there and I'm like, "Come on, man, get up, get up! Like, yeah. come on, man, what's up with you?" And he just laid there and I heard him snoring. And I was like, oh, no, this is not oh, good. Oh, yeah, that's This good. is not good. Like, he's not That's when you hit a nigga real hard. That's the result. Yeah, he was done. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, I see him. Yeah. yeah. 
but I see him there and I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? So my first instinct, my mom's a first responder. She's literally like less than a half a mile down the road at this yeah. time. This is how far we made it back to the house. Like we were right there. Right. So yeah, like I, I go past the spot and just break out in tears. Like PTSD is a real thing, right, y'all. Right. It really is. So, you know, it was dark outside. I have the flashlight. I'm looking around and I just see this puddle of blood. I've uh, never seen blood like this. You know, you see it in like uh, CSI and stuff yeah, yeah. like that, but you don't see it in real life. Uh, like it was surreal, you know? And I'm, and I, I'm the type, I'm really good in emergency type situations. You know, I, I, I try to react calmly and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm usually like, you know, fared on crystal meth, but like when it comes to the emergency situations, I calm down and I'm able to do what I need to do to help that person. But this time, my husband, you know, yeah. the love of my life is in my arms, you know, and there's this pool of blood. And so I call my mom, first responder. She comes down first. I'm on the phone with 911. You know, I t yeah. told her I just to come down here to, you know. Yeah, right down the street. Right down the street. Just you'll come see on, us. you'll see us. Yeah. Just come see on. See the flash. So she, she comes down. I'm on the phone with 911. My location is off on my phone because I'm a paranoid individual. Oh. So they cannot find us on a back road out in BFV. Oh. I have to explain to the dispatcher as she hears him screaming and wailing and seizing. Right, right. Like, I cannot, I, it was, it was the most horrific scene and, you know, violently, he was just violently ill. It was wow. horrible. And, and he ruined my new Birkenstocks. Like, fuck you. <laughs> Birkenstock. Like, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Words that are never spoke by niggas. <sighs> ruined my new Birkenstocks. Ruined my new Birkenstocks. <laughs> ruined. Ruined. It's gone too far. Ruined. Oh, I was so mad. So mad. But a lot of people, they don't know the extent. They just think, you know, he had a car accident. Right. And that was all I allowed people to believe in. You know, I I think it was more out of embarrassment for the situation. situation. Yes. It, yeah. it wasn't that I yes. was ashamed because, you know, some people very close to me, they obviously knew. And I'm sure word got out eventually, you know, right. things of that nature or whatever. But, you know, I had to come to the realization that it wasn't my fault. Right. You know, it's his fault. It's it, it was his choice to jump out and be selfish. It was right. his choice to oh push me to that limit. It was his choice to nearly rape me, you know? Right. I wonder, so, like, what was going through his mind? He was just like, fuck it, I'm going to jump out. You know I think I mean? he was just sporadic. Like, yeah. he, he didn't uh, have that defense mechanism to be able to work through his emotions. So once coping, he's confronted, coping right, cro coping mechanisms, right. exactly. So, uh, you know, it was just kind of a fight or flight. You know, I'm out. Yeah. That's it. You right. know, so. I'm, I'm just out. Because yeah. I don't want to ride around. I love watching work. his face. Did he know about this at all? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like that. I got to sprinkle, sprinkle some salt on it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah but not like this. No. <laughs> it's like he's, he's enthralled over here. He's like, man, bro. So let me ask you, okay, like. Because <laughs> he didn't want to ride. Yeah, with my mom. I have never, work. I have never hopped out of a movie theater. I have waited for a vehicle to get to a right, stop. Right, right. Let just, me the fuck out. No, I just <laughs> open the door. Like oh, my man. exit strategy is now. I'm not going to give you no warning. You're not going to know anything's happened until you hear that. Oh that shit! You're goes. not even arguing. No, you're just out. I'm out. True. You know how many niggas I know? I can call anybody. <laughs> <around>. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah, like I don't. There's times I've hopped out and I've been on my phone trying to find a ride and somebody pulled up and was like. What's up, bro? What's up? Hey, man, give me a ride down the street. <laughs> yep. All right. Yep. Boom. Boom. I'm, I, be, I beat you home. I mean, you that's how I am in Lewisburg. What situations did you just step out of the car? No arguing. Just. Oh, my mother. Oh. I've done it twice to my See, mother. <laughs> to my mother. It's the people you love the most. Yeah. I swear it is. Well, I just, I didn't want to get on that level. Like, we were, we it had a disagreement. Down. And, like, people like to argue in the car because they got you trapped. Yeah. Guess what? Ooh, I'm not trapped. I'll get out. I will get out of this car. Damn. Yeah, well, yeah, they know. They can time it. If they know where they're going, yeah. they can get you in the car. Silent warrior, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So, like, they can get you in the car. They can judge. <laughs> okay, I got 20 minutes to get from here to there. And then we can maybe have this argument done by the time we get there. But yeah. if you don't want to have the argument, guess what? You're stuck in the arena. Yeah. Especially if you're on the interstate. That's the real oh. place you get them trapped. Don't start the argument until you get on the interstate. Oh, uh, then you got them. You got them. What? You, you stop in town, 
You start yes. to argue in town, oh, I'm out. Yeah. I know everybody on every end of town. I'm out. <laughs> Here to Franklin, I know people. Here to Nashville, I know a few people in Nashville, a few people in Murfreesboro. Let's just step out for Yeah, I'm out. I catch <laughs> you. Have you ever stepped out of Murfreesboro? No, I'm, I'm, I'm for the argument. Right, right. I'm I'm, but I'm, but I'm arguing the or communicating? There's a difference. No, I'm for whatever whatever that person wants <laughs> whatever. to make. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Down for whatever. Down whatever for whatever. that person wants to make this, yeah. we can have a conversation, a debate. <laughs> The argument, we got a stare off. <laughs> because whatever we're arguing about, I'm sure I'm, that my stance is what I is, is not moving. Right. <laughs> to the point if we're to the point where it's an argument, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm not I'm not moving my feet. Yeah. <laughs> so you wanna go here? You said we got twenty minutes to the next spot? All right, bitch, come on. <laughs> okay. I just can't do it. I got to a point in my life where I was like, I'm not gonna argue anymore about certain things. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna put the energy in it because there's no benefit at the end. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to convince you to do something I need you to do or anything like that. We're just arguing for the sake of your point is right and my point is right. Mm -hmm. We all got a But you do compromise, correct? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You communicate and compromise. That's that's essential. For the sake of the points, I argue to make sure that. It's clear how much of a fuck I don't give. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says I don't give a fuck at all. Even like stepping out of yeah, just walking car. off. <laughs> yeah. Like you don't care. Some people say you not you don't care enough to even be mad, or you don't even care enough to even you're not even gonna say anything. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna say. That's anything. how I'm, my old man is. Yeah, he, he's the same way. Just silent warrior. Yeah. Just very still. You know, just like, like if you're right so or wrong, nice. it doesn't matter. The outcome is still the same. Yeah. Those type of arguments, like if something is broken, right? No right. matter how we argue about this shit, that's broken. It's broken. It's yes, broken. let's focus on how we're about to fix this. Right, right, See, right. Absolutely. You think I give a fuck that this is broke? <laughs> like, you think I care about you being mad about this thing? Right. I don't care about you or this. Right. Now what? Right. <laughs> like, right. like, that's the that's the ultimate throw your hands up like throw the damn towel yeah. throw the damn towel <laughs> that rocky moment I'm yeah. that guy right. I don't care right. now what now now we go because how do you argue with somebody that you know doesn't care right like that's my yeah. move I was like, oh, and and have you, have you ever tried to change yourself. Yes. You know how hard that is, right? Yes. Why the fuck are you going to try and change somebody else's mind? Yeah. Like, you can't. Yeah. You can't. I mean, plain and simple. Yeah. You can yeah. You can lead a horse you know, to you water, know, but you can't make them drink. Them drink. They'll lie and say that, you're yeah, okay, and then walk off and you know. Yeah. You I mean, know. I'm so full of shit. Yeah. It's just like I told that guy I was going to go to church. I do not happening, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, as far as change, I, I feel like I've changed myself a lot, especially since you, the first time you met me. Oh, yeah. Like, there's a oh, lot yeah. of change. Both of us. Yeah. Both. Oh, yeah. No. I wasn't going to out you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they all know. I used to be wild. Yeah. I, have, okay. I have a great okay. track record. <laughs> right. so, it's okay. I'm cool. I met, I met her when I, uh, I call it my tour of Chapel Hill. You know what I mean? Oh God! Everybody knows Chapel Hill girls are sluts. Like we, it's well known. It really is. Oh, you didn't know them? Let God. me tell you, They're sluts. there's nothing to do in Chapel yeah. Hill. So all they do is drink and fuck each other. Exactly. And That's like it. and mud. Yeah. Like I, when and I say and when I tell you they fuck each other, like I was hearing stories about moms fucking, you know, their kids' friends, you know, yeah. dads fucking Teachers. their daughters. Teachers. Yeah. Oh, I know of one in particular yeah, that was really hitting good. like six football players. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when yeah. I was in school. Yeah. yeah it's like, I don't dude. have it. Oh, Look, no, no. Okay. Ah, <laughs> See, and that's the problem. No, no, this is the problem because yeah. men won't out their teachers and stuff and no. call them pedophiles and this and that because it's cool. It's been stigma. You know, yeah. you guys that are like, hell yeah, just for the hot teacher. Fuck yeah. You know, it's not. I, you know, this woman just took advantage of me. I'm a young boy. I can't make these decisions right. yet. You guys are not capable at 16 to make a decision to have sex with a 40 year old. I watched you, one of my math teachers get a the whole train ran on after your homecoming. Uh, and like all the guys in the part had made a made the decision. They were, yes. they were very. See, <laughs> that's, that's too much. Yeah. That's they, too much. They were telling me. <laughs> yeah. 
Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, I saw it. I was, so, that's what I saw said. It. That's what I said. I was like, it's, it's too much. It's too many of y'all. I was like, right, right. I was like a remnant train. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is lemon. Like on the subway where you pull the, the string yeah. to get off the train. <laughs> yeah. You stuck in the. <laughs> I'm yeah. out. Right. <laughs> so I, I call it the tour of Chapel Hill because I had never been out in Chapel Hill. Like, I, I lived in Chapel Hill, but I was so. I was like younger than Mother Owen. I lived out there, my mm. son. But I, I call it the tour. I come back. And like, when you go into town, and like nobody really knows you, you pop up at a couple of parties and shit. Your flavor of the week, mm-hmm. especially out there, you singing some decent dick. Nothing to oh, some Lord. decent Good Lord. So like, is it decent? <laughs> I would know. <laughs> I know what you. Mean. I would know. But I'm just saying, it was my tour of Chapel Hill, man. I, I did that tour for a little bit. It was okay. <laughs> I met some. Folks. The one he's speaking about, like it was a tour de France. No, it, <laughs> was. it was. No, these are cornbread fed girls. They're good looking girls. They're just hoes. And they, I mean, yeah. they know they're good looking. I had my little fixed up oh. car and all that bullshit driving out there. Oh, please, man. Nigga. Tour He he was pulling more tail than a slow kid at the petting zoo. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then here's the thing. My dad at the time was dying. So I had to escape. So everybody in town knew my dad. Everybody knew he was dying. Everybody knew what was going on. So I go to Chapel Hill. Don't nobody go shit. We go out to the field parties, yeah. drinking. Yeah. Dying of vodka poisoning. I was, I was dating one of her friends at the time. Then when we broke up. Love was, you, Breezy. Oh, why did you call her name out? I said Breezy. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, we're still cool, but I just didn't want to put on blast. Anyway, I, I was dating one of her friends. Then when we broke up, like I had met so many people, and then they introduced me to more people, and then it was just like it was. And then you being you, knew all the people. Yeah. Look, let me tell you. So we went to a restaurant uh, this past Saturday, and I don't know if you already knew the guy or like this was your second time talking or something like that, but it seemed like you already knew him. Because it was, the, it was the guy right before we were about to leave. No, I didn't know this guy. Yo, <laughs> See? I, knew, just I knew his like family, him. though. Yo, the conversation went so deep, so fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is, for he sure. He's familiar. And I overhear him ask this man, oh, what's your blood type? I'm like, what? what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he an yeah. alien? Like, is no, he we're talking about COVID. We're talking about <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, plus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He hadn't caught it yet, so, so I was like, what's your oh, blood type? Oh, yeah, O positive. I also have O positive. My yes, kid sir. has had it. was asymptomatic. So, yeah. what's up, aliens? What's yeah. up? Yeah. Welcome, Welcome to, to the mothership. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's where we, uh, I, you know, I told him I was trying to get the plug on doing the Who That With Me there. Mm-hmm. Maybe get a plug on being upstairs. You know, it's mm-hmm. nice in that motherfucker. It, it, was. it just caught me up because I didn't know what was going on. I was like, I was making a friend. And then I know where. So what's your blood type? How did you get that deep? That <laughs> yeah. fast? Yeah, right. I was like, what? <laughs> what's like, the last four years old? <laughs> yeah, no yeah. shit. <laughs> which, which Can I sell you, you a warranty? <laughs> 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 right, right. I, yeah, <laughs> that's that's what it was, man. Man, you gotta get there quick sometimes. You know, I know you guys. If you guys weren't leaving, I'd have locked everything in. Yo, it'd have I mean, been a done data, but everybody was hitting the door, and I was like, I'll catch up with you. I'm gonna contact your daughter, and we're gonna talk about it. Later. Man, because I after I heard blood type, I'm like, we gotta get him out. I didn't know you were. It was the process to it. I was just like, this dude is asking <laughs> blood type. You have to trust the process. I didn't know. I didn't know there was a process. I was just like, <laughs> I'm like, Paco's nose is ass. We gotta get this guy out of here. No. He's asking the blood type. No, he's asking. I didn't know he was a part of the restaurant, so I thought he literally just met another customer. <laughs> oh, shit. There. And I was no, like, he's related to the people that own the place. See, I didn't know any of that. Yeah. I just saw you talking to him. That was my first guy. time meeting him, though. I was, just, I was like, this dude came in for dinner. The block was asking the blood. Like, I, I don't know how. Look, you got to trust the product. I haven't made it this far, living paycheck to paycheck, without having a process. Okay? <laughs> I don't know. Like, we got to get him out of here. Yeah. <laughs> we got to go. Gotta That's go. why I turned around like, pop. We got to yeah, go. Yeah, so I was just like, mm. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know I was fucking it up. I was trying to save the guy. I was like, no, no, no. What type? So did Michael, you? Uh, man, man, I'm all 
you did you hook up with me? Yeah, I'm laughing. So uh, okay. I'm good mom. <laughs> Yeah. Tito passed me the tissues. Y'all got me rough. Can I tell my, my dad's story? Oh, that is a great fucking story. Yes. <laughs> Listen to this. Oh, you know, no, you, this is, you're going to laugh. A bit. Let's wait for it to come back. Okay. <laughs> you're, are you hitting the restroom? Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Y'all had me. Checked for a minute. Right. <laughs> Cut that. Right. Okay. Now listen to this shit. I, right. now I died on this motherfucker. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. All right. So today's my birthday or whatever. And, uh, you know, Facebook always good people, that type of thing. So uh, I think it was your post. I, I, right, right, I shared right. yours. You have to give her a brief history. Of I am. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. But uh, my uncle has seen me. Uh, that it was my birthday, yeah. and I shared. I think it was Paco's post. So yeah. He, he yeah. saw it. So, oh so then my my dad, who is, he's paranoid also. He's like he's paranoid like, also. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, like you. <laughs> All right. So my dad what, hasn't been in my life since I was three, right? Oh. And I've only met him once since then. So the first time that we like after eighteen, like yeah. Since three, I met him that one time when I graduated, and then after that, it just wow. we just we just get in touch whenever, like every six or seven years or something right, like that. Right, right. So, but this he's he's the type to where we have the most nonchalant abandonment absentee fathers type Ooh, shit. Right, right. Like, like we don't talk about it. Like the first time he added me on Facebook, he sent me he sent me a, a documentary about chemtrails and shit like oh wow that was yeah. his hey son i haven't talked to you oh, so nice. like here's some, here's some chemtrails <laughs> <wasn't> it, <girl? laughs> so that's that's him yeah. um so today's my birthday right last, you ain't seen him in how long last time i saw him well, i was 18. The last time he told me happy birthday on the phone last time he told me happy birthday i was 16. Wow. So it's been 11 years since I've seen him, 13 years since he told me happy birthday, right? Right. But he gets on Facebook and he sees that this is my birthday. Oh, So Lord. he sends me a text. Oh, my God. And the text that he <laughs> no, sent me, please. the text he sent me was a meme. A meme? He sent me a meme. Not even a happy birthday text. Just wait till you see this <laughs> shit. Hold on, I can bring it back. <laughs> it was a meme. And he sent me a picture of Stevie Wonder. What? And it says, I know I won't see you, but happy birthday. Oh my God. <laughs> that is so fucked up. Damn. Does he realize how fucked up that is? No? Like, he don't care. Please show, please show the camera. Yeah. <laughs> show the camera. I'm trying not to put his, his number in. Like, yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. That's what I got. That's what I got from my dad after after eleven years. Look, we've only talked three times since since Good I was eighteen. And so, I know. <laughs> See you. I laughed so hard. Yo. Oh my god. No, he laughed so hard where I could tell over the phone he was crying. Yes. And then out of nowhere, as he's gasping for breath, he said, oh, "I already like this nigga." <laughs> Proper on now. <laughs> if I wish we need to do an award show called the Petty Boots, and yeah. just have like a little statue of boots. Yeah, the Petty Boot Awards. He's definitely gonna try. Yes, he's he getting the Petty Boots. I, I mean, yes. definitely. I, it blew my mind. I sat there and just stared at it for like three minutes. <laughs> All I can say was thanks. That's all I can. I couldn't muster anything else. I was like, all right. How do I even respond to it? Yeah. It's been 13 years since I got the last one. Yeah. Don't fuck this up. <laughs> thanks. thanks, bro. I told him we should have sent him the cash app. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm not getting that shit. Hey, um, <laughs> Cash out Amanda Abed for an Instapot. Thank you. <laughs> Anything, one dollar, five dollars, doesn't matter. How much All does an Instapot things. cost? I like a hundred bucks for the. Well, I want an air fryer now that I've heard everybody's reviews of these okay. Instapots. So what are we doing? We're doing an Instapot or an air fryer? I want. Like I, ooh, more than. I Send me cash up and we'll figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna buy one or the other, and yeah. they're about the same price, so I don't think it matters. We know what it's going to my kitchen. 
Okay. Feed the children. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Feed, feed the, the children. That's right. <laughs> Eat the children. Eat the children. So, to get back on topic for just a minute, <laughs> where is your life today? Where have you went since? Oh, oh no ceilings. God. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we're. Uh, I have an amazing man now who is nothing like me. He's not a spaz at all. He's super chill, and mm -hmm. he has two children who we have custody of, and I have my youngest son now. Mm -hmm. He's doing virtual and stuff, so I do that. And I'm staying at home right now. I was able to actually quit my job and stay at home. And Shut up. You're my, staying at home all Yeah, I am. And it's weird because, you know, I always work. Like, yeah. I was the provider, you know? Yeah. And for me to actually sit back, it's it's, uh, it's weird. So it there, really there was a light at the end of the tunnel. There definitely yeah. was. I oh. ended up in... How April. long have y'all been together? We've been together a year. Y'all aren't married, right? Are no, and we will never, oh, never. Okay. We, we both, <laughs> just we, you on we both actually have like an agreement already. Yeah. Like the only thing we're gonna do is go to LA and go have a little beachy anniversary yeah. type thing. In LA, maybe why would like ten years. Or Texas. Because my best friend lives in LA. Oh yeah, I forgot oh, yeah. about that. Mm. My bad, girl. <laughs> <laughs> she knows. Yeah. I was like, why? <laughs> Why? Because right? she's the best. Yeah. I, I think I want to travel up the coast though and go see like a really pretty, pretty beach. Right. One of those high class beaches. How, how long did it take you to decide to start dating? Not long. Not long. Uh, oh, no. I did it again, but did it is not right. Is it codependency? No. What is it? No. What like, drives you? Okay, so even I was I was speaking to a therapist the whole time through this, obviously, mm -hmm. or I would have just lost my shit. Thank God, too. Thank you so much. You know who you are. So she <laughs> she got me through all this. You know, she was talking to me the whole time. I would go in there and just actively mourn the loss of my husband because he wasn't who, he, who right, I thought he right, was, right, you know. Right. So I was actively mourning the loss of him. And, and after the facts, after I told him to leave and stuff, I asked her, I said, uh, I said, why am I not sad? Why am I not crying? Why don't I feel guilty or anything? Like, I, it's not even that I'm numb. Like, I'm trying to have and recall the feelings that I'm, you know, that I should have. But mm -hmm. there's nothing there. I don't feel it. Why? And she said, baby, I've been watching you mourn for the past six months. Like, you've already given him up. And right. it hit me. I was like, you're absolutely right. So at that moment, I felt like I was already processing through that up until that point and, and that was finally when I had that self-respect moment and said right. no more and right. that's enough this is my boundary you cannot pass this this right. is it and I'm glad right. I did mm -hmm. liberation. right absolutely and I've never felt more liberated and I would tell my new man I love you baby but he knows I'll tell him you know if I don't agree with something and we'll try to come to a compromise and mm -hmm. it's taught me a lot just about patience and you know choosing your battles wisely Right. basically because you know you never know that one you know right or wrong word may make or break somebody's day so always yeah. be kind yes. Yes. always That's just true. kindness so okay and hopefully that you women out there see the red flags and don't do what my dumb ass did what, and... what advice would you just give to them <laughs> besides just this right there like what if, like because our last guest talked about trauma bonding mm -hmm. which i'm sure mm -hmm. that's what happened to you yeah. when the accident itself happened. Mm -hmm. uh, it was mm -hmm. a trauma bond. Right, yeah. right. And I was so, and it was a codependency thing at that point because, you know, I felt like he needed me and I needed him to right. keep me busy almost. Right. It, it, you know, even though I really didn't need to be busy, I needed to be away from my thoughts. Right, right. So it was just kind of a distraction more than anything. Okay. But I mean, I, I had this self respect thing going, you know, and I thought that I was just honoring my vows to me that's what it felt like i all of my intentions were pure and simple really right, right, right. you know i i didn't have any intentions yeah that's i I, I stood by my vows you know i said them for a reason yeah. it, one time I, it was exactly what i wanted so you know yeah. but we're different people now and i've learned a lot oh my gosh just uh you know i wish i would have went back and saw the signs i mean when they start lavishing gifts on you and calling you their wife within the yeah. first six weeks like red flag number one like that's not good you know and you know just uh if they start getting 
you know, gaslighting you, making you feel like you don't know your line between reality and, you know, am I making this up? Is this all me? Right, you know, right, so you right. have to, you have to come to terms with that. I mean, there's a lot of things with the emotional and mental abuse, you know, things of that nature. And also with caretaking um, disabled individuals, that's also really yeah, tough. I did 10 years of yeah. doing the mentally challenged. I took care of them. And I, I mean, it was rewarding. That's yeah. beautiful. Like, I, I have a deep respect for people that like, you know, take care of like the mentally challenged or mm-hmm. like, yeah, the only reason I stepped away from it, my kids were coming to an age where I couldn't miss another Christmas because, you know, JoJo called out of work because he's, you know, he must spend Christmas with his family and got me fucked right. on that one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was missing Thanksgivings, Christmases, everything. My kids were just looking, like, where you at, bro? Like, I couldn't do that well. Right. I had to, I had to step to the side. So, I'd gotten pretty good in the, in the field. The state recognized they gave me an award one time and a check for $1,000. Wow. Yeah, best of the best award. Damn. Yes. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it was a, it was a, it was a career. You, you could have... Sort of, yeah. Career. Once I got that award, all kind of companies were like, come work for us, come work for us, come work for us, you know? Damn. Yeah. Nice. So it was cool, but... But the babies, though. <laughs> so many decisions the babies. made for the kids. Boy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I gave up a ballet career for my kids. Ballet? You did ballet? ballet. I, I had a scholarship. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, fucking <laughs> love ballet. That yellow dress went a <laughs> long way, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? I, I love oh, that. he really does. Look at his tag. <laughs> yeah. Show the cam. Oh. Show the cam. <laughs> Check it out. Down. There you go, sort of. Yeah. I have a ballerina oh, on my back. It's really shitty, no, but I have a ballerina. Oh, yes. Yeah, what's wrong? Yeah, what's wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Ballerina. I'm real fun with the ballet. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting that either, bro. That's cool. Huh? You just made my whole day. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, you got deep levels. <laughs> yeah. Just going to ballets, yeah. doing it all. Have you been to a ballet? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. A real, you better I've, never if you get been. I've never been, but I've performed in a lot. Oh, yes. I've never been like to, to physically to... watch. I would probably cry the whole time. Like, I would be so emotional. Those are the right one you will. Yeah. yeah. Like, I really wanted to see Swan. Like, the classics, yes. you yes. know? I've like, oh. seen Nutcracker and Swan. Like, I was Claire and the Nutcracker. For real. The, there were three women from the Nashville School of Ballet that came down and scouted me out for the role. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. I used oh, to be shit. really skinny. Ask him. I used to have a banging body. <laughs> like, for real. You know? Yeah, I, I, I was the, Next the beast. I tried. You know, good about it? I know yeah. where you. Yeah, I worked really hard That's at it. Up. That last okay. year, man, I really worked hard at it. And when they came in there, I was uh, they came in there, but they ended up leaving, and my dance took took over the or my dance teacher took over the whole production. It was great. Oh, wow. Yeah. The, so they came down and they picked everybody for this play in Lewisburg, you know, mm-hmm. and then and then they just dipped out, and then we were left with the production of oh, Nutcracker. Wow. So it was like, okay, well, where can we get dresses now, and who's gonna play, <laughs> you know, the dress of Meyer and this and that. And it but it ended up being so fun. Like that was one of my most fond memories, and I remember. When I was little, telling my grandma, I just want to be Claire and the Nutcracker, because I'd always been in ballet. You know, right. I was real little when I started. So that's, that's, right? mm-hmm. that's cool. Oh, I love that thing. Absolutely love it. Yeah, and I really wanted to make a future with it, but lo and behold, teenage pregnancy happened. Oh. On the next episode. What's funny is my baby dad is a second degree black belt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. He was crying in that pussy. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm done. I'm done. He, he, he finally busted. He was like, whoa. Oh. <laughs> he busted. He was like, no condom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. I hope my baby daddy don't see this. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's giggling. You know, he's gonna hate on my ass. <laughs> I heard, you know. I do not hate on <laughs> <laughs> That is not the noise I made. <laughs>
<laughs> he had a whistle. He was like, boop, boop. I would bring a whistle. Say what? I would, I would do a whistle. You do a whistle? I would do a whistle. Do a whistle. Like, no, I would bring a whistle if oh. I was doing like. What? Yeah. Kind of weird she was. Just to be, just to be, just to be. And then without discussing it too. Like, just pull it out of nowhere. Just out of nowhere. So We're three shit. positions in type shit. What? Like, <laughs> 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 not, don't even do it that much back to back. Just one to where she looks like. What was that? Did I okay. hear that? Right. Is that a whistle? Yeah. <laughs> what? What the hell? I... Is there a whistle back then? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Must be making that noise. <laughs> do them cables. She has to go on T-Talks. Yeah. T-Talks, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, oh, shit. He was cracking up. Oh, shit. You <laughs> Look, you're crying now. Look at his eyes. He's water. <laughs> you go I got a whole mother? mental picture. Like, oh, I was yeah. just hitting the gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's like hitting the gun. You know yeah. uh, uh, uh. You know, a just gong? hit it. Just hit the you gong. gong? You know? Yeah, you can get a little gong about that big. Boom. This is out of control. Yes. <laughs> get you a cowbell. Oh Ooh. yeah, I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> get it, baby. More cowbell. Yeah, there it is. Hey, hey, if we're... she turns around and, and hits the cowbell with you, though, know? yes, that's I'll... how you get married in six months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's the real deal, though. Yeah. <laughs> no red flags there. That's right. At all. Uh -uh. Bro, okay. <laughs> how long are we? How long is this? Amanda, <laughs> thank you for coming. Oh, on. fuck. <laughs> Welcome to the mothership. I, I've had a blast. Please come thank back. You. Thank Please you for come back. Me. <laughs> <laughs> he is cracking up. Oh, I will be shit. happy to co host with you oh, anytime. God, Absolutely. Man. You just invite me back. I'll be here. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate you so much. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. I didn't think I was going to laugh this much on Survivor Story. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know me very well, does he? <laughs> oh, shit. Wow, that's good. That's a wrap. Yeah. So, Brandon, you got anything you want to say? Um, uh, rest in peace, Cicely Tyson. Oh, yeah. Uh, go out and hug somebody. Yeah. Um, oh. And make sure y'all get the stereo app to check out us raw and uncut. Yes. And look out for the food reviews. Yeah. And we also got the audio podcast that yeah. you guys like while y'all at work and everything. I listen to our old stuff at work now. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. We're funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do all of that. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Just what, what if? And this is only because he just moved back to town. What if we do a reunion episode and bring Steigelman back? Let's bring Steigelman back. Yes. I want to get do Steigelman. It. Yes. Yes. I wonder how long it would take for him to get uncomfortable. I don't know. <laughs> uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 We'll tell you later about that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of want to do a reunion. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm with it. We'll plan it. We'll plan it. Uh, spread the word about the podcast. Let everybody know about the mothership. Go to the mothership.nc.com. Mm -hmm. Get get you some merch. You can click the shop button on our um, Facebook page. Also, show your shirt. Boom! Get you Ooh, some dad. merch. Yeah, like that. Get yeah. that merch today. We're gonna, we're gonna take that voice. <laughs> Ooh, dude. Yeah. Ooh, dude. But other than that, um. Man, make it through the week with your head on right. Uh, stay blessed. Don't stress. Life is just a test. Who that? Who that? <laughs>